the calendar behind me makes clear something about the context that we're in. We are just three weeks from an election, a presidential election in which folks are voting in more than 40 states. Millions of votes have already been cast. And just a week after that election, the Supreme Court's going to hear a case um, that could take away health care protections from more than half of all Americans. So this is not an abstract academic argument. It's one that will have real life consequences. Pregnancy was treated as a pre-existing condition, and women were routinely charged more than men. I'm simply trying to make clear that I think your writing here in 2017 in Constitutional Commentary, um, yes, the majority of it is a book review um, about a book that centrally talks about NFIB versus Sibelius and methodological questions. But near the end, you are, I think, unmistakably clear in saying, I disagree with the Chief Justice's ruling upholding the Affordable Care Act, and I deem it unplausible and unsound. Senator, as an academic, I did express a critique. And I, you know, you, you've quoted the language. You've pulled out those few sentences at the end. Um, I guess I'm a little uncertain what it indicates, um, because as I've said, I have no hostility to the ACA. And if a case came up before me presenting a different question of the ACA, I would approach it with no bias or hostility. I also have said um, at earlier points in this hearing that the exercise of being a commentator, an academic, is much different than the enterprise of judging. And I didn't have to sit in Chief Justice Roberts' seat or Justice Scalia's seat when NFIB versus Sebelius was decided. So but you will, if we follow the timeline laid out by my colleagues, given what President Trump said, given the rushed context of this confirmation, will you commit to recusing yourself from any case arising from a dispute in the presidential election results three weeks from now? Senator Coons, thank you for giving me the opportunity to clarify this, because I want to be very clear for the record and to all members of this committee that no matter what anyone else may think or expect, I have not committed to anyone or so much as signaled. I've never even written. I've been in a couple of opinions in the Seventh Circuit that have been around the edges of election law. But I haven't even written anything that I would think anybody could reasonably say, oh, this is how she might resolve an election dispute. And I would consider it, let's see, I certainly hope that all members of the committee have more confidence in my integrity than to think that I would allow myself to be used as a pawn to decide this election for the American people. So that would be on the question of actual bias. And you asked about the appearance of bias. Correct. And you're right that the statute does require a justice or judge to recuse when there is an appearance of bias. And what I will commit to every member of this committee to the rest of the Senate and to the American people is that I will consider all factors that are relevant to that question, um, to relevant to that question that requires recusal when there's an appearance of bias. And there is case law under the statute. And as I referenced earlier, in describing the recusal process at the Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg said that it is always done with consultation of the other justices. And so I promise you that if I were confirmed, and if an election dispute arises, you know, both of which are ifs, um, that I would very seriously undertake that process, and I would consider every relevant factor. I can't commit to you right now for the reasons that we've talked about before, but I do assure you of my integrity, and I do assure you that I would take that question very seriously. Thank you, Your Honor. You've already said it's not plausible to interpret the mandate as a tax. 